Hello and welcome to this guest slot on Wild Wisdom Wellbeing. And in case it's your first time tuning in or maybe you're watching the replay, I thought I would just introduce myself. My name is Robin Harris. I'm soul, a soul alignment mentor and founder of Equenergy Wellbeing Naturally. And as I was saying, this is the Wild Wisdom Wellbeing guest slot. And today I am absolutely delighted to have Rebecca Oxenham of Rebecca Oxenham Jewellery here to talk to us all about her wonderful nature inspired pieces. But Rebecca, maybe you could just start by telling us a little about a a little bit about who you are and how your business got started. Yes, yes. Um, so my name's Rebecca Oxenham um, from Rebecca Oxenham Jewellery, just to make it easy. Um, my business actually started um, during lockdown. Um, I was made redundant from my office job and um, and I kind of thought, hang on, this is a, an amazing opportunity um, to do what has been probably more than a hobby, probably a bit more than, a, than a, an obsession that I've had the, the last few years. And, um, and, and, you know, while I wasn't in work, I suddenly found out I was getting all these commissions coming in. So I thought, hey, <laughs> perhaps this is the opportunity. And um, and Rebe Rebecca Oxenham Jewellery was born. And it, it's also, it, I mean, I've found that jewellery making for me has been, um, it's, it's a bit like a therapy. I, I find it really relaxing. And I've been combining that with being out in nature, um, which I think is what's quite special about my jewellery because it's the two combined and that obviously is what drew me to your work because I just love nature and all that it gives us. And when you say that your jewellery making, the, the creativity of it is therapeutic. I also think that the being out in nature is very therapeutic, just spending that time in the stillness and surrounded by green and that mindfulness that you must have as you're out collecting your pieces. I know, I think it was on your website that I read, you go out and you collect lots of yes. little bits. You speak yes. about acorns, sycamore seeds, or, and you have some beautiful sea themed pieces as well. So yeah, that, that mindfulness and focus and just taking you out of the everyday demands and all of the expectations that we have on us and just getting into that moment and that yes. stillness and that presence. Yes, exactly. And, and, you know, I've, you know, just, just feeling the textures of leaves actually, mm. um, you know, I, I go round, um, you know, I can't go for a, a walk without picking up either leaves or bits of twigs, um, mm. acorns, sycamore seeds, um, and it's a bit, it's a bit childlike almost. I remember doing that as as a child, you know, filling my pockets with sycamore seeds, and 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 you know, it's almost it's great that as an adult I've got an excuse to do it. Um, but you know, and, and so I'm finding that I'm feeling the textures because I'm imagining it in jewelry, and I'm kind of imagining <laughs> things on me as, as I walk around, and it, it's um, it's been great. Um, excuse almost um, but but yeah it's it's amazing um, how beautiful our nature is when you really really look at it and you take the time to kind of look at um, I mean I, I'm obsessed with acorns I'm wearing actually my little acorn earrings actually which is a, a new piece I've made today and um, you know I'll be out collecting them and, you know, I found that I've started to look at into um, the symbolism and the meaning behind some of the things that you find in na nature. And um, I think the word druid actually means um, oak knowledge, um, which I think is, is lovely. And, and, you know, there's a saying from Little ac Acorns Big, what is it from? Oh, I'm getting it confused from... Was it from a, a little acorn, a big oak grows, you know, and, and you know, they've been a, a symbol of, of strength. Um, and so I find that when I'm wearing my jewellery, you know, as I touch it, 
um, it has a certain meaning to me, um, whether, you know, it could be an acorn and I'm thinking about, you know, the strength of an acorn. Um, I'm wearing a shell today and, you know, I might be, you know, thinking actually shells actually symbolise protection. Um, but, but, you know, it also has memories of collecting shells on the beach that come back to me. Um, and I've, I've got um, sycamore seeds. Um, this is one of my sycamore seeds. That, um, there's just such a beautiful shape um, and such a beautiful texture. But, you know, as a child, I remember throwing them up into the air and having competitions with my sisters to see, you know, whose acorn, uh, sorry, whose who's sycamore seed um, came down the first. And, you know, there's, you know, there's so much behind it. But, um, yeah, and, and so for me, it, it's about nature and actually what nature gives us and so I, I hope that whoever wears the jewelry has has some something um something to kind of remember nature or their memories of being in nature so um but yeah there's absolutely and, and there's a lot of history you know with amulets mm. and, and 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 things where people have had um items to protect themselves um usually from nature and so it's a similar idea of, of, of having an amulet, um, a little piece um, that we have with us at all times that, you know, has a special meaning. And I think that's really important with jewellery. Absolutely. I'd just like to say hello to Beverly, Beverly Jones, who has joined us. Uh, I'd like to pick up on a few things that you've talked about there. I love the idea of being childlike that it brings back that childlike nature and we can just lose ourselves in joy because as adults we get so caught up in the day-to-day -day, the mundane or the, the responsibilities and the have to do's and the to-do lists whereas we can just have the freedom of being childlike that's amazing and the idea of the texture i love texture i go around photographing uh, tree bark and things particularly when we had the snow and you could see where it gathered in little pockets oh, yeah. on the tree yeah. bark. But I think for jewellery, quite often we put it on. You can't see your own earrings. You often can't see a necklace or something if it's hanging at a level that's mm. too high. Yeah. But you can yeah. touch it. Yeah. And you, and you can, and you're talking about acorns. We get quite a lot here. We have a lot of oak trees. And I love how when you take the, the acorn out of the little cup that it comes in, it's so smooth. And it's yes. like one of those people, the you know, worry stones that people used to have that you can just constantly yes. work at. And people talk as well about things like gratitude stones that, you know, you put it in your pocket and every time you put your hand in your pocket, it just makes you think, oh, I'm, I can be really grateful. I can give thanks or whatever that might be. And like you were talking about amulets and mm. you, know, you have anchors in NLP and things. They really do help us to focus and just bring us back, whether it's to a good memory that we've maybe had on the beach as a child or in the woods, playing with your sisters with the sycamore seeds. Just yeah. bring all that focus and all that positive energy into one thing that you can have with you at all times yes yes exactly that's exactly it you know and um yeah i mean the textures i mean i i use it a lot you know and, and it's, it can just be a way to bring your mind back to a slower pace almost mm -hmm. um and some way you feel i mean for me nature is where i feel calm and so if if i start to feel a bit stressed off you'll find me playing with a necklace or, or feeling my jewellery. And it, it just kind of brings me back to that calm place. And, um, you know, it's been somewhere, nature is somewhere that I'll always kind of go if I'm, you know, if, if I feel in trouble, it's my kind friend. I, I kind of feel it, it's it's my place that I will go to. Um, and, um, and so having something that you can have with you at all times, I, I just think is, is is lovely. So that's kind of where my my jewelry comes from. Really, is 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 from, you know, that kind place. It's nature and all those memories that goes with it. All those gifts, really, aren't they? Yes. Or yes. Present. Yeah. Yes. And I I read was it on your website about how you see nature as a kind friend, and that 
really blew me away because I that's how I see nature quite often. And I was just pondering it a few months ago about you know having people or places that you can go and turn to when you need to offload and you need space and you and where do you get your support and sometimes support is from people but for me it's the kind friend of nature as well and yes. it just gives me that space and that sense of freedom and expansion that is so grounding as well when you're talking yes. about that calm place and it's the for me as well the centering and the grounding that just makes me you know that <sighs> sense I think we've and all had it, those, you know, you can have those days where we get up and we feel depressed. And if I ever have, I mean, I remember my mum saying to me, you know, as a teenager, you just need to get out. You need to just get out the house. Yeah. And actually, yeah. if I have a, a dark day, if I just get out into nature, it, the world just feels like a better place, you know, and, and that's what I need to do. You know, and I kind of feel if everybody could get out every day and have a little bit of time in nature, that we would be a lot stronger <laughs> and a lot more able to deal with, you know, we're going through pandemics and awful things at the moment. But, you know, what, what has been, I suppose, you know, there's always positives out of negatives is that a lot of pe more people are actually getting out and having the time because they're, working from home, actually getting out in nature. And so many more people have got dogs and things and, you know, so they're walking their dogs. But, you know, I just think it's so important for us to be able to go back to nature and actually always have that kind friend that, you know, is is nature that's there for us. What, whatever we're going through in our lives, that it will be there and it will always be, you know, it will always feel a little bit better. You'll see the, the sunlight through the green leaves, if there's green leaves at the time. But, um, you know, it will always feel, um, the world will feel a better place. Absolutely. And we're getting some lovely comments here. Uh, Beverly's talking about photographing and embracing nature when walking uh, due to the See No Bounds, I believe, uh, walking challenge that we had last year. And now it's an addiction and she sees beauty and feels peace from the simplest of items in nature. Uh, and in the bare tree, for example, you were talking about the leaves, but also I love bare trees in the winter when you yes. just see the branches against the sky. I think yes. it's incredible. You really do get that sense of timelessness almost and yes. solidity and strength and, and groundedness and rootedness, all yes. of those things. You were saying about getting outdoors. I strongly feel that when we get into those, I'm going to use Jamie um, McCanch from, again, Sino Bounds, his term, muddy puddle days, because they just, so, it just so describes how we feel sometimes. You just wake up and feel a bit yeah. listless and down. And for me, the great thing to do then is to get up, get moving, get outdoors, get into fresh air, natural sunlight. And even yes. if you can't go outdoors, if maybe the weather is appalling or you're not able for whatever reason to get outdoors, open a window, open a door, just sit yeah. and breathe and have that natural light, which is so important for us, yes. particularly in the winter, when even yes. the days we don't want to go out maybe, but it's still very, very good. And I sometimes think, look out the window and think, I don't want to go out today, but when I do, I feel so much better. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've got I've got a dog, and and sometimes oh. it's rain, and I think, oh, do we have to? But actually, I'm once I'm out, if I can be absolutely soaked through, and it, you know, I, I really enjoy being out. It's just the thought of going out, really. <laughs> Definitely, and uh, somebody saying, I think that might actually be Liz. Is that Liz? Is just coming up with Facebook user uh, favorite places outdoors with the girls or Boris. Uh, nature is beautiful, calming and precious. The wilder, the better. Absolutely. I'm with that one. Whatever the weather, no matter how down I feel, as soon as I'm outdoors walking, it's all OK again. It really is such a way of shifting our energy out of that muddy puddle and into something much more uplifted. And just even the action of moving just gets your energies flowing, gets you feeling 
much uh, more positive. And I love that you were saying as well about within every challenge, there is a positive within every cloud, a silver lining. That's something mm -hmm. I share in the kutches that I run in my group as well, that the Chinese symbol for a uh, crisis is actually danger with opportunity. Yeah. So I love that, you know, they bring the two together, even if something looks like it's a real threat and it's mm. scary, just look for the opportunity. It's in there somewhere. And it just yeah. takes us to be curious and open-minded in order to look and find it. And uh, you, you also, you talk about how you experiment with yes. the things that you create. So you're creative and you experiment. And again, it's coming back to that childlike. Yeah. I got the real impression from reading your website that it's so much fun and it just inspires you and uplifts you. It does. Yeah. I mean, you know, here in my studio, you probably see how messy it is actually. You know, I, I potter. This this is like my woman shed. <laughs> you know, I bring things back here and I'm pottering around, trying things out. And, you know, um, and I think, you know, that whole creativity, it's, it's very calming to create a space for creativity. I mean, we can just be, you know, if we're not careful, we can be so busy in our lives that we miss nature and we, we also miss the opportunity to be creative. And I, I actually believe everybody is creative. Some people go, oh, I'm not creative. I think people, everybody is creative. They just haven't always found out what their creative outlet is, but there will be one. Uh, you know, and I think it's important to try and find that for everybody because, um, again, it's it's very relaxing. I mean, I love love potting around in here, making things, trying things out and experimenting. Not everything works, but, you know, then I'll try something else. But, you know, it's I constantly learn. So <laughs> and I, and I will do it. <laughs> I was sharing something the other day that I had come across myself, which said that fail f-a-i-l stands for first attempt in learning so it's not yeah. that it went wrong necessarily it's actually just oh i've learned now that that didn't work <laughs> and perhaps in doing that i have come up with a new way of trying it a new way of experimenting and i i agree completely that we all are creative just some of us maybe with um pottery or with with drawing or with words you know writing i think is a fantastic way of being creative music photography all of these different ways of expressing we have maybe a sense that it should be art and artistic but mm. there are so many more ways to be yeah. creative i think and it gets us back to that childlike it gets us back to the joy it gets us out of the mundane every day and I, people as well in lockdown where we've been having this cabin fever, we've either gone outdoors or we've become creative or both, even combining the two as you have done. <laughs> yeah, I, I totally agree. And, and I think, you know, part of being creative is actually yourself. And I think that's a lot of what creativity is about. And, um, and that's why I think it's so important is having that little thing that's your thing that you do. Um, whatever it is, is just. I just think it's really, really important. And I think it comes from the fact that we are mind, body and soul or spirit, whatever way you want to describe it. And completely I agree that it's part of that spiritual soul being ourselves, giving ourselves the space and the time and allowing and permission to just do what that, because that creativity is that being that, being and doing coming together and really expressing who am i because when we are creative we're making something new that hasn't been in the world before so that is that comes from us when we can truly do it from that central core rather than i'm being told to draw it this way or create it that way when i'm letting myself express that's why i think creativity like you say is just so magical and yeah. so precious yeah Uh, so maybe could you show us some of the work yes. you created yes. recently? Yes. So um, these are, I don't know how easy it is to see this. This is a little acorn 
Um, I have a, a gold version of this, which is plated, where I plate the bottom half in gold. Oh, hang on, I'm going the wrong direction. <laughs> um, but yes, so this is um, one of my lovely little acorns. Um, and I've just today been um, making um, earrings. If you can see those. Oh, they're fabulous. Um, but yes, which are, are really really cute um i've got i've got several acorns but that's my smallest one and i've got um a couple of other sizes um i've also got acorn buds and these are the buds where it's just budding out and i just watch um there's an acorn tree near where i live and i, I just lo love watching the different stages mm. of them grow um so i had to i had to do some buds too um and uh, this this is a sycamore seed. Oh, I get keep on going in the wrong direction. Oh, I know. I, I hate the cameras. <laughs> way. Which way? Is the right way. Um, it's quite interesting. Um, I also do memorial pieces actually, um, mm. where I, I I do a stone in resin uh, with memorial um, cremation ashes in it, and um, they're actually very popular with sycamore seeds. Somebody. Um, who I've, I've just made a piece for, said it. she just imagined her, her dad blowing in the wind, which is why she, she wanted um, a sycamore seed to have him with her at all times, and, you know, because she just kept on seeing them blowing around in the wind. And I thought that was just really lovely. Um, I've got starfish, because I love starfish. Yes. Um, but yeah, they've got beautiful texture. Um, I, just love I saw that on your website, and I thought particularly that's lovely because they do. They they're so finely detailed, aren't they? They are. See, they've got lovely. lovely detail, and these are you know the typical cockle shells. Um, and um, I don't know if you can see that. Oh, I kind of I keep on going in the wrong direction. Yeah. Um, but they've got amazing texture. Um, and rib, don't they? They're, they're so perfect um, and there's so many of them that were so perfect that I kind of had to um, pick them up um, but they're collected um, on the beach um, near me um, near Hamble actually um, but um, the beach near Hamble is amazing um, for the finds on the beach um, this is a hazel leaf um, I think I mentioned bring it over the text and, yeah we have quite beautiful? a few hazels we have a lot of yeah. hazels here and you're talking about the acorns and watching them bud I love the acorns or the hazelnuts I'm watching them and how yeah. they're kind of wrapped in this beautifully elegant little capsule Yes, yeah, I mean, they're amazingly beautiful. That's maybe one of my new pieces I'm going to have to make when they come out. Um, I've been making daisies as well. This is, um, I need to plate the centre of this. Um, I've got earrings as well that match that. But, um, oh, and a rose, roses. I've been making roses. I love roses. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. Somebody just saying there that uh, the starfish piece that you showed reminds her of the starfish thrower. Do you know that story about how the boy finds the starfish on the beach and he's throwing them one by one back into the sea? And somebody comes along and says, you can never throw all of the starfish back into the sea. And he says, I know, but I can change it for this one and this one and this one. You make, making that difference for each as much as we can. That's a lovely story. I, I don't, mm. I don't think I've that before, but that's such mm. a lovely story. But yeah, they're, they're kind of just a, a small selection of my pieces. I've, I've got more further back, but they're kind of yeah. Um, you know, I, because everything's handmade, I I tend not to have a lot of stock in. Yeah, so, you kind um, of make it to order, um, and then it feels so personal. Yeah. yeah. I try and have it made up if I can. Um, I'm quite behind at the moment, but I think I've got lots of things that are at different stages. You know, I've got the, my, uh, this is actually a, a bigger acorn as well. They're different stages that um, 
So, it, it, you know, most things are not making completely from scratch. They're halfway through. <laughs> yeah. And then you complete as, as requested, exactly. as, as ordered. And share a little bit as well, if you will, about the materials that you use, because I know that you are hot on sustainability, which is another passion of mine as well. Yes. So I use recycled silver. And a lot of people, when they hear about recycled thick silver, they imagine that I melt down pieces. I don't actually melt down the pieces. I, I buy it in um, in grain or sheet that's ready recycled. Um, the, there's several reasons for that. One, if you melt down from scratch, and there are a few bits, you know, if I try something and it doesn't work, I'll, I'll melt it down and, and reuse it that way. Um, but there's a lot of companies that they um, they buy all the scraps from jewelers and all the dust is actually kept and they buy all of that. And, and, and from that, they make recycled silver and they do it on mass. Um, the trouble with doing it on a smaller scale is, is one, you don't um, you can easily get some stuff that's not proper silver in there. And that's the main reason why I don't do it. Somebody. Um, Fairly, when I was kind of fairly new starting out, they'd given me some jewellery and, and, and said, this is, this is um, I know it's not hallmarked, but it's definitely silver. And the trouble is, it got into my pickle, it got into my dust, um, and it wasn't silver, because as soon as I tried to melt it, I could see it wasn't silver. Um, but it, it contaminated so much that then made all of the stuff that it contaminated had to be replaced. And um, really, you need to have, um, you know, like the S assay office have, have things that they can check that things are properly silver before it's melted down. And those big companies have that. So that's the reason why I don't repurpose. So the, so jewellery that is recycled in that way is, is tends to be called repurposed silver. And recycled silver tends to be um, the brand of recycled silver I use is called Eco Silver, um, which is a special brand of recycled silver. And I also use silver clay um, in my jewellery. And that is a, an amazing product, which mm. is made from ground down silver particles and a binder to make it into a clay like substance. And you could, and then once fired, the, the binder burns off. And um, and you're left with uh, recycled silver, fine silver. So wow, because I've heard, I, I know somebody else who uses that and always wondered how it works. And now I know. Thank you. Yes. And, and what's amazing about that is you buy it ready in a clay-like form, but all the, the powder left and any bits and pieces left, you essentially can repurpose it. I collect it all. Um, I actually run some clay workshops and I collect it all at the end and I ground it back down and um, mix it all together and, um, and and use that. So this piece here, this hazel necklace, whoop, kind of the, chain's, so the chain is coming out as I show you. Um, this, oh, it was made with silver clay and what's right. Um, but it was done as a silver clay slip where you can actually paint on layers. So I painted on layers of an actual leaf and build it up and then fire it. And then the, the, the leaf kind of fl flies off as a burnt leaf. And, and underneath, it's got all the texture of, of the leaf, which is, is quite magical, really. <laughs> it, it is. It, it must be such a magical process to see leaf leaf covered with all of the layers that you've painted on then put it into an oven obviously shut it away in the oven and do its thing and then whoa there you've got this beautiful piece and I do love that and the texture on it I think if I had it I'd be there fiddling at it all the time yeah the uh, the uh, sycamore seeds I make are also done in the same way but I actually have two sycamore seeds on each side and I actually um, sandwich them together so it's actually made from two sycamore seeds. That way you get the texture on both sides so it can. Of course. Yes. Um, but yeah, so yeah, it's quite painstaking. 
<laughs> well, yes, quite time consuming, I should imagine, and quite fiddly. You were talking earlier about the um, symbolism of the acorns, the, the strength that uh, mighty oak trees grow from the little acorn. What is the symbolism of the sycamore? Is it, I mean, there's the air element and you talked about that for the woman who got the memorial of her for her father in remembrance of her father. Can you tell us a little bit more about the symbolism of the pieces that you're aware of? Um, I think um, sycamore trees um, are kind of symbolized protection. Um, so um, I think it actually came um, from America, there was some story um, about soldiers finding protection under a large sycamore tree. Um, they're very large trees. Um, so I think they've, they've come to be seen as protection um, through, you know, diff different cultures and religions. Um, so um, I tend to see them as, as protection. Um, I think especially from reading it. Um, but yeah, so it's a kind of a combination of mm -hmm. things. Um, but yeah, I, I think they, um, they're they a lovely symbol of, of protection. Um, and I think it was in Wales, uh, the sycamore tree, uh, you know, they make um, sp love spoons out of them. Oh, uh, that's the wood they use. Yeah, so um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's just got some lovely things behind it, but yeah, particularly protection. And the oak tree is very significant in Wales. There are a lot yes. of place names that use that. It's used as a person's name as well, and um, it's the, the national tree of Wales is the oak, Welsh yes. oak. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, the oak, oak tree, I mean, <coughs> trees are just beautiful, they're beautiful trees, and um. It's, it's nice to kind of have English, you know, it's, it's the it's the tree I always think about um, when I think about English trees um, is, is an oak tree. Yeah, I think it's pretty much the net, the kind of symbol, symbolic tree of, yeah, no, the, right. I, I don't know about Scotland, but Ireland, Wales and England all use the oak. Yes. And it is, it's, it's the, the kind of quintessential England, isn't it? The oak tree. Yes. And you can you see them. If you're driving through the countryside and you see uh, some beautiful examples that are sort of standing on their own, looking very regal and majestic, whether it's winter time or summertime, they're very characteristic, aren't they? Yes, and you know that you know oak trees. You know the symbolism is, is of strength. Um, mm. You know, I kind of think, you know, I always it's something about you know the big strong oak tree. I always feel you know that it is a, a great symbol of strength. Um, you know, and just the big roots with it as well. You know, they're kind of beautiful mm. trees. Definitely. So tell us a little bit more about the workshops that you just touched on a moment ago. Yes. Um, yeah, um, I started running beginners um, jewellery making workshops using silver clay. Um, I have to say I absolutely loved running them. Uh, it, it's such such a pity. I can't at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it's really, you know, really interesting, um, the jewellery that people make in them. Um, you know, I, I love, you know, a lot of people make leaves in my workshops, I think because, you know, the jewellery I make is nature inspired. Um, but um, but I'm just, I'm always blown away by, by the jewellery people make. Somebody made um, a knot. Um, in one of the workshops that I thought was lovely and I'd never have thought of doing that but because of silver clay is it's like a clay so she kind of rolled it into a snake and just tied it into a knot it was really simple and I was like wow that's absolutely amazing but um but I love seeing what people make and I, I kind of think it's it's really nice that you know people you know it, it becomes a special time people are kind of coming away from their busy lives um, to do a workshop and um, you know everybody I think most you know I, I kind of run three or four because I haven't been going on that long but I managed to fit in uh, four workshops between lockdowns yeah. uh, you know, some of them I've gone out to people um, so if it, like I did a big birthday group 
Um, I thought like a hen celebration would be brilliant, but of course, yeah. haven't been many weddings going on lately. Um, no. You know, I did a, a big birthday group um, of, of six women, and that was lovely, you know. Um, so, yeah, I've kind of gone out to people or I've held workshops here in my studio, and I also used a, a, a venue in Alton um, as well as going out to people um but but yeah i mean it's it's just um it's just lovely and i actually didn't realize how much i'd enjoy teaching it's interesting because both my parents were teachers and um and i think oh maybe there's a bit of a teacher <laughs> in me <laughs> I, think, I think there might be actually in in a lot of people if we can tap into that if, if it's something that we're passionate about and we can share that it nearly doesn't feel like teaching does it it just feels like sharing and enjoying alongside of them enjoying seeing their pleasure in the thing that we love yes yes <laughs> so so for me it was amazing because i kind of thought wow you know i would just love to be jewelry making all afternoon with a group of women and and actually <laughs> yeah. and actually as you mentioned that there's something isn't there about coming together in that group and particularly if it's a group all of women that sense of you know the women's circle sort of thing and i'm sure that that's something that has happened through the ages that women will come together and make amulets or things like that and yes. how precious for those people who come to your workshops that they then have that thing to take away and to remember and i can see why you would say it would be a great idea for a hen group to yes. do because then they could make something that they would then wear at the wedding. And that, exactly. that would be that memory of the time that we shared as the special group preparing for the wedding. And here we are. Exactly. You know, and to have something that they'll always remember. And they'll they'll have memories of that day. And um, and I think that's that's a, a lovely thing. But um, but you know, I, you know, I think the first workshop I held, we joked because it, we we said it was almost like a therapy session because we you know, we managed to kind of bond over our jewellery making and um, we told each other all sorts of things about our lives and we'd gone through all of, you know, the problems we'd had with husbands or partners and, and you know, women used to do that all the time um, and actually it just felt so lovely and we, we hadn't, we didn't know each other, they are complete strangers, but suddenly we kind of, <laughs> and that was in the first workshop I held, and it was, it was interesting that, um, and actually, you know, that both, um, all the, all the uh, students on, on the course, on the workshop, we've stayed in touch and really good friends ever since, <laughs> but, um, and that was my first workshop, so it was a lovely first workshop um, that I held, because we just, yeah, loved it so much. <laughs> And I think that's kind of going back to what we were talking about earlier, that spiritual side of creativity. And when you come together, creating together, I think there's something very special. And like you were saying, women, all cultures have come together, whether it's storytelling, which you were doing kind of alongside of the creation, but yes. also um, knitting circles, sewing circles, these these creative arts that women tend you know, it's mostly women who get involved in them and also women who would maybe in other cultures um over time have been raising the children and while the children were sleeping or they were caring for them they'd be doing some sort of craft that still allowed them to mm. take care of the kids but brought them together while the men were out doing the hunting and yes. the gathering yes yes so that there's that kind of concept as well of this is something that has happened over time and that we're continuing on that tradition yes and so perhaps it's something that we've lost sometimes you know yeah. again with our busy lives and our nuclear families and you know that we've mm. lost a little bit of, of that and um you know um you know don't get me wrong i don't think that you know women always need to stay at home and do the cooking but it is quite nice to you know be able to come together and and do something like that particularly using your hands or you know where you just you know can be creating together as, as a group and um you know I, I was on holiday in india and you know i saw that a lot with the women out out in india you know you'd see them chatting as they were you know you know i watched them making bracelets actually and they were chatting as they were doing it and i thought god that looks that looks you know they look like they have such lovely lives they have no wealth but they you know 
but they're wealthy in so many other ways, you know, and, um, you know, and I think it's interesting that we've kind of almost lost that a little bit sometimes. And sometimes we need to get some of that back. And it's that concept of community and connection and realizing that we are all connected together. We are all joined in some way, like you were saying, you had never met the people on the workshop, mm -hmm. your first workshop before, and yet coming together in that way helps us to see actually we have so much more in common than we do yeah. differences. And the differences we have are great because they add to that richness. And you were saying that, yes, women and I are involved in so many more things than maybe we would have been years ago. We can go out and we can have jobs and we can do the work and family and that's wonderful, but it's nice and maybe even more precious and special because it's not our everyday now yeah. that we can yeah. have these these uh, circumstances, these situations that we can create where we can get together. So yes. I think, yeah, your workshops are wonderful and hopefully you can get back to organizing them and running them again soon. Yes, I do, I do hope so. I mean, I've, I've, I've got a, a jewelry making kit uh, that I send out to people, which is, you know, it's nice for them to do it, but I would love to be teaching people, to be honest. And, you know, because that's what I really enjoyed. Could you do it online? send out um, the kit I, I do you. yeah i do have an online one um but um i don't think it's never going to be quite the same as face to face um no. you know, i think it you know if somebody's looking for some you know to learn a skill um well we can't you know go out and do somewhere it's great but you don't get the full you're not going to get the full experience of doing a workshop that you would with doing it face to face so um so I see it's a temporary thing being online, oh, and yeah. as, soon, as soon as we can, <laughs> it will be face to face because that's what I would I would love to be doing. And I think it's the same with most of these things now. It's wonderful that we have something that we yeah. can put in place in the meantime, and exactly. also because it gives us more reach. It's wonderful that people can join from all over the world. I'm involved in a bereavement support group. I sometimes go to death cafes because I'm passionate about bringing that subject out into the open. So people have joined from all over the world, which is fascinating to hear different perspectives from different countries and different cultures. But yes, it's not the same. And we all look forward to getting back to person to person, face to face contact yes. again and connection. Yes, but for some people, of course, that, you know, it's better than nothing, you know. Yeah. I, you know, I've done, you know, online courses myself, um, particularly during this lockdown, um, where I, I would always pick face to face because that's what, the, what that's what's available. But um, it is better than nothing. And I have to say, without Zoom and and all this technology, this lockdown would have been at a lot worse than it, it is, you know, because we can do things. So, um, so Definitely. yeah, you know, I, I don't love technology. I'm not particularly good at it, <laughs> but, it does. but it has its place. <laughs> so when uh, people come to you to do a workshop, do they go out themselves and look around, maybe pick up leaves or acorns or uh, whatever, because it might be something that isn't nature inspired, if that's uh, yes. their interest. But do they bring those things themselves or is that something that you provide for the attendees? Uh, a bit of both. I try wherever possible to encourage people to go out and pick their own leaves. But I'll talk about what they're looking for in the leaves that they're going out to pick. So I will talk through that. Um, but quite often I do bring to a workshop mint leaves, for example, um, and we've got verbena here in the garden. And um, not only do they smell lovely, but they've got the leaves have very, very good textures um, for making silver clay jewellery. So I will bring some of those along. So there's a backup. Um, but I, I try and encourage people to find new leaves that, you know, that are out, out and about. Um, the venue I was using in Alton, there's not loads of, of um, countryside directly outside the venue. Um, when I've done them here in my studio, of course, I, I will send people out and I, I won't have the verbena leaves, but I'll point them to the verbena bush um, so that they can 
collect them themselves because I think there's something really lovely about collecting leaves yourself and going through feeling all the textures whereas you know if you put everything in a potted plant it's, it's not quite the same so but yeah and I that's that's how the workshop begins I'll show them a few things um, and I've got lots of books and give them ideas of, of what they can make and show them pictures of what people have made in last work, the last few workshops. So they've got an idea. Um, but I'd like people to feel that the jewellery they make is their jewellery um, and it's special to them and they have designed it. I mean, a lot of jewellery designers that do workshops kind of almost want to design other people's jewellery. But I kind of think if people come to a workshop, I want to make them the designer so and and to find their own meaning and and um choose their own leaves you know because i think that's important and that's an important part of the workshop absolutely it's 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 the kind of foundation of the whole process isn't it to go out and choose it's the choosing yeah. the choosing is such a, a magic precious special part of the whole thing it is, you know, and I could give them the leaves that are the best and, and pick ex exact leaves, but then, then they're not being their own designer so much. And I, I do think it's it's important for people to, to choose, yeah, and, and feel that that's, they've chosen that leaf or, or whatever they've found. And, um, and uh, it's, it's a jewellery that they've made to their design. And, um, yeah, and that's what's special. Wonderful. So yes, fingers crossed it's all able to go ahead again soon. Yes. So is there anything particular that you would like to share with us today? Any final words? Uh, not really, only that, you know, what what you know, it's been it's been a difficult time and um that I hope people can find um something themselves and particularly after re listening to this that they will hopefully go out in nature and actually take a second look look in more detail mm. at every leaf and smell it touch it and and actually i i hope that you know if, if you do that you know that you'll 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 feel part of what i feel being in nature and hopefully you know you'll have have find some of the comfort that I find in nature that hopefully you'll find it too. Beautiful. And I think it's kind of that bringing in all of the senses like you have done because you've added, there's obviously the visual, then there's the tactile. And now you're talking about smell and you showed us flowers, but also leaves like mint leaves, verbena leaves. There's so much to it. It, it is so mindful that yeah. it's kind of like losing yourself but it's truly finding yourself your core your your soul self as i often call it really connecting with that on that deep level again which is why i think it's so so healing to do these kinds of things so rebecca i'd just like to say a huge thank you for coming today and sharing some of your beautiful beautiful pieces and the story behind how you create each unique piece thank you so much thank you i've loved being here thank you so thank you very much for joining us everybody and I, I will be back again soon I'll be posting on the group as to who our next wonderful guest is going to be so see you then bye for now